We power leveled this account from City Hall 18 to 25 in literally less than five hours so that we could experience the new version of Heroic Anthem, Kingdom vs. Kingdom. In this video, we are going to break down everything we did wrong as we spent 750 bucks to get everything we needed to power up, as well as the things that you need to know if you're going to power your account, regardless of whether or not you're spending to City Hall 25 and Rise of Kingdom. So stick around for all the mistakes, complete and everything else you need to know. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chiscool Gaming, a content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. And when the new version of Heroic Anthem Kingdom vs. Kingdom landed, of course we had to experience it. Now normally you have to be City Hall 16 to get in, Turns out you had to be City Hall 25. So what would any sane content creator do? Buy every single pack you need to get to City Hall 25. And that is what we did. In this video, we're going to break down literally everything we spent on, why you shouldn't try to emulate what we did. However, the things we would do differently so that as you push to City Hall 25, you don't make the same mistakes we did because, look, we were rushing, but it was very entertaining to watch, and I want you to see all this stuff. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos and insane gem spending, as well as free-to-play guides because we love our free-to-play fam, all right? All right, playlist up in the top. Now, we explained why we were powering up, right? I'm a content creator covering Heroic Anthem. We had to be high enough City Hall to even get into the darn zone, which, by the way, it is really cool. Uh, but let me start by saying exactly why you should not copy what we're doing here, okay? Do not do this because, look, we had some serious motivation, okay? We need to make videos for Anthem KVK, so we went in, we went beast mode and like we're a content creator we're gonna try to make some of that money back on our videos and get more subs so for me it makes sense but for you okay you shouldn't do this first of all we had some advantages that people wouldn't have okay one of those advantages going from city hall 18 to 25 is that we got 300 mil of like each resource donated to us this would not have been possible at the amount of spend that we did Without the generous donations of people giving resources, that is Glory, Hanubica, and Dreams, who hooked me up with crucial amounts of resources. The majority of those RSS from Hanubica and then from Dreams to round it off and get me to the finish line here. So very much appreciated from both of them. It was a ton of resources, and without their help and the bundles we purchased, it wouldn't have been possible. The other thing that we had going on was a title on our city, the Architect title. That Architect title gave us 10% more building speed. By the way, one other title we had that most players won't have access to is the Counselor. 1% extra building speed and research speed. Weirdly enough, right now, nobody in the Alliance has any titles, but a quick shout out to the alliance that I'm in, Fire and Blood, thank you for having me and for giving me the counselor. Now, you may be thinking, oh, Chizgul, I'm in the early game. I'm going to do like you did. I'm going to power up. We'll, we'll hold the phone. There are a bunch of buffs that we had that you would not have in the very early game of Rise of Kingdoms. That includes Duke. That includes a whole bunch of alliance technology that accelerates building speed and research speed, which is a relevant thing here, okay? So we've got some extra building and research speed that normally you wouldn't have. All the holy sites related to building and research speed, this alliance would have had. So we had some huge advantages in our push to getting to City Hall 25 that you would not have that would make this way, way more expensive, okay? That kingdom title uh, of the architect is only available after the lost temple's been captured. So if you're thinking you're in a new kingdom and you want to go do this, let me tell you, you understand a lot more speed ups than we did, even though we were very inefficient in my estimation. The other thing that we had is, of course, a rune, runes you get from the map. Uh, we had a 10% rune, I believe, for some of it, 7% for some of it as well. Uh, and you certainly want to be training with a rune. Now, in terms of the bundles we were buying, we spent, and I actually went back and I added it all up. We spent, uh, I thought, around a thousand bucks, but when I actually did the math, it was less than that. We spent $745 and 75 cents. We have literally every bundle on a spreadsheet in front of me. But by the way, that dot 75, that 75 cents, um, yeah, every bundle has 99 cents at the end. So we bought 25 different things 
to actually get all of the gems. And you can see we were super inefficient. We have 181,000 gems left over here. Oopsies. Uh, as we went along. Uh, let me tell you everything we bought, okay? We bought a couple special bundles, three writers of history, which sounds weird. Like, you don't need writer of history to power up here. Uh, however, we did want to have, like, the ability to level up some commanders at all because we're so low power, we can't even battle the barbarians in this format for Kingdom versus Kingdom to spend our action points. I literally can't even spend my action points here except to join Fort Rallies, which, like, you know, okay, I got 30,000, you know, T3 cavalry, but that's something we'll talk about in just a minute. So I got three writers of history. I picked up the VIP 7 bundle because it had a bunch of speed ups in it. It gave me some Minamoto uh, so I could actually like use them for something at some point. We also bought the $1 VIP 1 bundle, 10 hours of speed ups for one buck. Uh, actually more than that, some five minute speed ups in there as well. Figured that was probably worth it and gave me a little bit of Minamoto. Uh, we also max purchased the King's Coronation. That is a highly efficient bundle as far as bundles go. And I guess it doesn't show up anymore now that I've purchased it. Uh, but that is a bundle you can buy at the $100 tier once. So that is $5, $10, $20, $50, $100. $50. We purchased two of the bundles from The King Has Returned. So this was an account that had been dormant for 30 days. And there were a couple bundles that I could get for like five bucks each over here. Wisdom's Power and Building Supplies. I picked those up. And there also was a Halloween special bundle at the time, which if you were trying to emulate this, there's probably not going to be a holiday bundle. And that holiday bundle let us trade a special currency from the bundle for more speed ups, which sounds like the insane lowest value way to spend that Halloween currency, unless you're doing something insane and stupid like we were powering the City Hall 25, in which case it was value, baby. We used a bunch of our gems, by the way, in the VIP shop to get more speed ups, but there's still more we purchased. We purchased the growth fund, which is 15 bucks, uh, which I can't actually show you anymore because we fully claimed it. But that gives you gems every time your city hall gets higher and higher level. It's the best value for gems in the world. And like part of the reason we ended with so many gems uh, is that you get 40,000 gems for getting to city hall 25. So really we used like, a, you know, we were down to 140,000 gems before we hit city hall 25. And then there were city development bundles. So as you're leveling up your city hall, at different odd levels of your city hall number, you get a bundle offer that's a one hour offer and it is decent value compared to other things. We purchased that at the $5, $10, $20, $30 and $50 tiers for a grand total again of $745.75. And the crazy thing is that I probably could have spent maybe a hundred to $200 less and still accomplish this, okay? So I was pretty inefficient in how I was doing this, in part because we were rushing. This was not a planned operation, okay? If I would have planned this, I would have done things a little bit differently. Uh, let me tell you the things that I would have done differently. Um, First and foremost, I would certainly time with a kingdom buff. A kingdom buff is something that becomes available to you after the Lost Temple's been conquered, and the king of the kingdom has to activate it. It gives you either 10% building speed or research speed, for four hours, it's everybody in the kingdom gets that benefit, and there's a 20-hour cooldown on how often that can happen. So I certainly would recommend that before you're powering out some of these big things, even if you're in an early kingdom, like, wait until kingdom buffs start firing off so you can get some huge, huge discounts on the things that are crazy expensive, like the city hall, which, you know, it's like an 80-plus day operation before helps, typically. For us, it was like 60 days because we had so many other buffs and uh, technology that was making that a lot easier for us. So I would split up the speeding up that you're doing into two different days, okay? One is research, the other is building. Now, research-wise, there's some research that we realized only part of the way through we needed to catch up on, and most players neglect fully their economic technology. This is really something you should not neglect. Since hitting City Hall 25, we've actually picked up a bunch more technology over here related to gathering. But if you were just streamlining for City Hall 25, you do want to make sure that you max out, and I do mean take to level 10 as early as possible, the engineering-related research so that you get a cool 35% extra building speed. I also really like mathematics, by the way. That's something I'll be investing in as I continue to power up this account, which I don't know exactly where I'll be going with it, but you want to focus in on engineering, and there is one other 
research that is really critical over here, Mason Ray, but you know, in the early game, you'll probably pick that up pretty quickly. But public service announcement, if you haven't ever looked back at some of these early ones, just to make sure you max them out, consider doing that because there is some value there. And although it's going to be tempting to get your military technology powered up, for what I was doing, it did not make sense to power out our T4 troops. But if you were doing this normally, you would certainly want to get your T4 troops as fast as possible. And like, look, this would have took, I don't know, almost 100 days worth of speed ups, maybe actually more like 80 days worth of speed ups to get all of the T4 troops done. We were on a beeline to getting our uh, sea hull to 25, but you would definitely want to detour for all the good stuff for your T4s, for getting your tech up associated with those T4s when you hit City, uh, City Hall 23 and Academy Level 23. So that's something really important that we did not do that I think you would do normally and was a part of what enabled us to do this for so relatively cheap compared to what it would cost like a normal player who's trying to optimize here. Okay, so I don't want this to feel like achievable for 550 bucks. Like not, not really, okay? Um, so I would start with the research, then go ham on the building, and I would mention that there are a couple really critical buildings that you want to be leveling up as you go. One of them is the Alliance Center. The Alliance Center determines how many times you can be helped, helps reduce the amount of speed ups you need, and that is straight value. The other thing I do majorly differently is if I were doing this over time and I had had any advance notice at all I would need to do this, my strong recommendation to you would be to align with events, you know? Like, there's a Mightiest Governor right now, and I'm not saying you could win Mightiest Governor powering up things from your city uh, other than troops, but, like, look, like, there, if we had timed with an event at all, we could have gotten some free value. We gained literally, like, seven or six million power over the course of the five-hour window when we were speeding stuff up, and that is an, uh, you know, like, you could do an event and actually place if you were emulating this. Now, why would I say you should not be emulating this? Again, one more time. Just looking in at the troops over here, like I can't do anything. I had to speed up T1 Siege just so I can gather resources with all five marches, which I did unlock by getting all the way to City Hall 25. I do have five marches that I can gather with, uh, but not enough troops to do it with. But I sped up literally T1 Siege in order to make that happen, which seems kind of ridiculous. Now, one thing we ended up doing is using this shop a little more than you normally would. First of all, we went into the VIP shop, and at the time... I mean, we bought like every speed up we could. I'll just pick those up. Every speed up we could for gems, we just went completely ham. And I will go back and buy all these eight hour speed ups. May as well get some use from my gems over here and power out some other stuff. Maybe I'll uh, crank out some T4s so I can actually like contribute on something in a meaningful way in this KVK over here. Uh, but the VIP shop was a place that we looked early for speed ups and completely drained. And the other portion of the shop we used at the tail end and this is what we could have done differently to end with less gems because, again, I mean, I'm going to get some value with this account as like a farm slash account that maybe lives in Kingdom 2 and scouts future events. And as a content creator, there's some value for me here. But, um, you know, so I'll get maybe something out of those gems that, that it takes me a little further here. But if I was doing this again and trying just to really land exactly on City Hall 25 and have zero gems left and zero speed ups and zero uh, resources, I would be spending more gems in here. And you may be saying, well, Chiskel, why are you looking here and not just smashing the gem button in when you go to speed things up or upgrade things, right? Like there's a gem button in here. Where's my gem button at? Well, maybe I'll go to a building upgrade instead. Where the heck is my gem button at? Where's my gem button at? I guess I got to build it new. Okay, hold the phone. Let me show you what this looks like. When you build something new, when you build something brand spanking new, there's a gem button, okay? Do you see that instant button? This instant button, you should not ever do, ever, for any reason. Zero, there's zero reason you should ever use this instant button. Let me tell you why. I mean, maybe there's some weird exception I haven't thought of. But let me tell you why I should never do this, Okay. The reason you should never push this button is that it will buy whatever you need in the absolute most outrageous, silly, and expensive way possible. Seriously. Like, last time I looked, and, it, and it's been a while since I actually looked into this, but, like, what what is this? Nine hours and 36 minutes of speed-ups, and it wants 821 gems, okay? 
821 gems. Well, if I was buying it from over here, I get eight hours for 240 gems. So what the heck? That's like way overpriced. But let's say you're out of things in the VIP shop and you were buying it over here. Okay. If I look at it, well, this is 600 gems. Okay. And a one hour speed up is 120 gems. So it's like, wait a minute. It's still like 800 gems. Like, why is this more expensive than it should be for like nine hours and 30 minutes? This doesn't make a ton of sense, right? And the reason is that it buys the speed ups in like the most expensive possible way. I think it does it as if you're buying like all one minute speed ups or something outrageous. Like it is the, it is the most inefficient way possible to just smash the instant button. Also because, by the way, you haven't actually let them anybody help you. So letting yourself get helped is going to reduce the time of this thing. There are zero situations where smashing the instant button is the thing that you should do, at least that I can think of. Leave a comment down below if there's like a world in which you should push that instant button. I don't, I don't know, like maybe healing your troops in a crisis, like maybe you could get some value, maybe, but do not gem it. The number of folks were like, Chiskul, you know, start gemming things. And the way that I gemmed things is by going into the shop, right, and buying in the highest denomination possible the amount of speed ups I needed, which if you check out the live stream where we powered to City Hall 25 in less than five hours, which I really would recommend that you do, and there'll be a card, of course, available to you so you can link directly to that video, tap the little info button in the top. I, it was a very fun live stream, really insane and crazy. You can see that a number of times I go into this shop and I'm doing the math and I'm trying to figure out like, hey, should I be buying some of these speed ups? And I do buy one of these 30 day speed ups for 40,000 gems. This is not actually good value, but given that I had drained speed ups from literally everywhere else, then it was a valuable thing to go and pick up for that particular insane instance. All in all, it was a lot of fun powering this account up to City Hall 25. I don't have a lot to work with here. My commanders are still not amazing. I don't have enough troops to really do the things I need to do, nor do I have the speed ups to go and do it. And over time, as the VIP shop resets, I'll go in here and buy these speed ups in a more value oriented way than trying to otherwise gem them to try to power up this account in order to contribute to this kingdom versus kingdom. So if you're looking for more guides about how to power up an account quickly, I'll have a card up in the top for that. And you should seriously consider subscribing to see this account in action during Kingdom vs. Kingdom for the Heroic Anthem format. This is the new format of KVK. You're not going to want to miss it. The pass is going to open in a day and a half, a, probably a day or so from the time this goes live. You're going to want to see how new combat works in KVK. It is going to be very fun. So consider that subscription. And if you're looking for more of those videos on how to power up, check that info button in the top or the links in the description to get you everything you need from either a beginner's guide designed to power you up to 5 million or 5 to 30 million, or even all the way up to my guide that'll take you directly to T5. Whatever you need, it's there, and I look forward to seeing you in that video. Subscribe to the channel, throw a like, and leave comments down below with anything else you want to know, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. P.S. Also, huge shout out to everybody that donated to me in this insane live stream where I was spending a ridiculous amount of money to power up this account. I just want to give that quick shout out to Devil's Knights, Little Vino, Jamie, Reverse, Penner, Baron, AJ, Mr. Charles, uh, Tyler Stevens, Mihai, JD Guzman, Mark Stoddard with the 50 donation, Raps Tour, Lattice, Emperor 14, Whoopi, Jason Bonilla, uh, and Connor Farrell, thank you all for hooking me up with donations that enabled me to get all the way up to City Hall 25. I appreciate you helping me out on this journey. Thank you. Thank you.